in a daring maneuver that epitomizes both grand aspirations and pragmatic ingenuity. China is boldly venturing into the last frontier with a groundbreaking initiative, launching rockets directly from the expansive seats. Despite facing skepticism for years, Recent groundbreaking demonstrations conducted off the shores of Shandong province have unveiled Beijing's ambitious plans to tackle the hurdles of sea-based vertical takeoffs head-on. This move not only showcases China's technological prowess, but also hints at its relentless determination to push the boundaries of space exploration. Yet, as China delves deeper into the uncharted territory, questions arise about the extent of its commitment to advancing spacefaring technology and the potential global ramifications of harnessing the power of the ocean to achieve orbital dominance. On January 11, 2024, in the vast expanse of the Yellow Sea, a remarkable scene unfolded. A peculiar-looking Chinese solid-fueled rocket named Gravity One stood poised on a launch ship. With a powerful ignition, its four solid fuel boosters roared to life, unleashing a staggering 600 tons of thrust. In a display of precision and power, Gravity One successfully deployed three Earth observation satellites into a sun-synchronous orbit. This event marked a significant milestone in China's space endeavors, signaling a shift towards a new frontier, sea-based rocket launches. The genesis of this trend traces back to early June 2019, off the shores of Shandong province. A humble barge was transformed to accommodate the long March 11th, a compact solid-fueled rocket developed by China's state-owned conglomerate CASC. Originally designed for land-based launches, the Long March 11 underwent a remarkable adaptation. It was modified to be ejected from a launch tube on the barge using cold gas propulsion. On June 11th, 2019, History was made as the Long March 11 ignited midair, propelling seven small satellites into low Earth orbit. What began as a technological demonstration soon evolved into a routine practice. In subsequent years, the feat was repeated in 2020, 2022, and 2023 solidifying China's prowess in sea-based launches. As the Long March 11 blazed the trail, other players entered the arena. The Zhilong 3 from China Rocket, the Series 1 from Galactic Energy, and the Gravity 1 from Orion Space joined the fray, expanding China's sea launch capabilities. These ventures represent a diverse spectrum of payload capacities, ranging from hundreds of kilograms to a staggering 6.5 tons. Yet, this is just the beginning. With ongoing developments in solid fuel technology by China state-owned manufacturer AASPT, the horizon for sea-based launches appears boundless. In the vast expanse of the Yellow Sea, amidst the roar of engines and the dance of satellites, China charts a new course in space exploration. With each launch, they propel not only satellites, but also the aspirations of a nation reaching for the stars. The Chinese appear poised to venture beyond the realm of solid-fueled rockets hinting at a shift towards liquid-fueled alternatives for sea launches. While earlier mentioned rockets predominantly utilize solid fuel, Chinese commercial entities like Space Pioneer and Galactic Energy are suggesting adaptations of their liquid-fueled rockets for sea-based operations. This raises the pertinent question, why the sudden rush towards sea launches, and why does this trend seem predominantly Chinese? To grasp the essence of this trend, it's crucial to provide some historical context. Sea-based launches aren't entirely unprecedented. In the early 2000s, a multinational endeavor known as the Sea Launch endeavored to explore this approach. With stakeholders from Russia, Ukraine, the United States, and Norway, the project aimed to utilize a mobile sea platform, voyaging from Long Beach to the equator, leveraging the Earth's rotation to propel satellites into geostationary orbit. Despite its ambitious vision, Sea Launch encountered formidable obstacles. The intricacies and expenses associated with sea-based operations proved daunting ultimately leading to the demise of the venture. Similarly, in China, the aspiration to launch satellites into geostationary orbit from the sea isn't a primary focus for many of these enterprises. Upon closer inspection of their sea-launch-capable rockets, none possess the necessary payload capacity for modern geostationary satellites. Additionally, these capabilities haven't been actively promoted by Chinese companies. In addition, China boasts existing launch centers like Wenchang and Zhichang, strategically located at relatively low altitudes. These centers already cater to the demands of launching geostationary satellites. However, the allure of sea launches extends beyond geostationary satellites. For satellites destined for low Earth orbit and medium Earth orbit, 
Launching from the SC presents distinct advantages. The launch location can be tailored to match the specific orbital parameters of the satellite. This flexibility is a key selling point highlighted by Chinese launch companies venturing into sea launch capabilities. But there's another, more China-specific rationale behind the strategic move. Consider China's map, its three busiest launch sites, Jiuquan, Taiwan, and Zhichang, are all situated inland. Consequently, when rocket stages and boosters descend, they typically fall back on land to avert any risk to densely populated areas. Operating within these constraints limits the azimuth, the range of directions, in which rockets can be launched. Even with meticulous precautions, such as temporary evacuation zones to mitigate risks, the process remains challenging. Here's where sea launches offer a compelling solution. By launching from the middle of the ocean, companies sidestep these restrictions and complexities altogether. This remote launch location not only eliminates logistical hurdles, but also allows for launches into any orbital plane. This freedom from constraints is a game changer, enabling companies to reach diverse orbital trajectories with ease. Furthermore, the burgeoning activity of China's existing launch sites underscores the need for alternative launch options. With the number of Chinese launches escalating annually and new commercial entities vying for launch slots, traditional military-controlled launch sites are becoming increasingly congested. This congestion poses challenges for both commercial ventures and national space program missions alike. In essence, the emergence of sea launch in China is driven by a convergence of factors. The quest for operational flexibility, the desire to evade logistical constraints, and the imperative to alleviate congestion at existing launch sites. As China sets sail into the new frontier of space exploration, the seas beckon with promises of boundless opportunities. In 2019, China made a bold move by establishing a sea-based spaceport in the coastal city of Haiyang. This spaceport, dedicated to commercial launches, has become the hub for all Chinese sea launch missions. Located in Shandong, the local government has invested massively in this venture pouring funds into the spaceport's development and encouraging launch companies to set up manufacturing and assembly activities nearby. One remarkable aspect of this endeavor is the construction of a dedicated mobile sea launch platform, a colossal 162-meter long ship designed to support both solid and liquid fuel launch vehicles. This platform saw its first action in 2024 during the launch of the Gravity One mission. The objective behind China's Heiyang spaceport is clear, to industrialize sea launches and surpass the current rate of one to three annual sea launches. With several Chinese launch companies announcing ambitious plans, there's speculation that China could soon achieve double-digit annual sea launch figures within the next two years. However, the long-term sustainability of this venture remains uncertain. Similar to the challenges faced by the Russian-American company Sea Launch, China may encounter high costs associated with sea-based launches. Despite this, the strong government support for sea launch infrastructure suggests that Chinese sea launch endeavors are here to stay, albeit possibly with fewer players in the future. It's worth noting that some of the enthusiasm for sea launches in China may be fueled by investor money, given the remarkably low prices at which some launchers were sold. Nevertheless, with continued government backing and the establishment of new launch sites, Chinese sea launches appear to have a promising future. Thank you for watching. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.